Okay, I'm going to warn you right now, this, the topic we're going to cover today is a little bit on the crazy side, but it turns out if you kind of stick with me, it actually is kind of fun when you get used to it. So what we're going to do, the I can statement today is 3.2, I can convert. So we're going to write the word convert. I can convert repeating decimals to fractions. So you'll remember on the last section when we were talking about rational and irrational. Rational numbers may go on forever, but they've got a, a rational decimals may go on forever, but they've got a, a repeating pattern to them. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take some really kind of ugly looking fraction or decimals and we're going to turn them into fractions. And this warm up may not make sense right now, but I hope it does in the long run. So let's just remind ourselves of some basic ideas from elementary school. If we took 12.34 and we multiplied it by 10, when we multiply a, uh, multiply a number by 10, we get to move the decimal over the same number of spaces is the number of zeros that we have. So we're going to move it over to the right. It's going to get bigger. So this is going to be 123.4. If we take 12.34 and we multiply it by 100, we're going to move it over two decimal places. So that's going to be 1234 with a decimal right there. If you wanted to put a zero on there, you could. Okay, and if we were to multiply by 1,000, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, uh, 1 for each decimal place, and we've definitely got to fill in with a 0 right there, so this is 12,340 um, on that one. So, uh, next warm-up question. If x is equal to 2, does 10 times x equal 20? Now, um, we've got this equation right here. A couple different things that we could do here. We could plug in the 2 right here. So if x is equal to 2, uh, 10 times 2 equals 20. So the answer on that one is yes. Um, let's see. If x is equal to 2, does 1,000 times x equal 2,000? So again, if we plugged in a 2 right here, this would be 1,000 times 2 equals, equals 2,000. So the answer on that one would be yes. That's one way to think of it. We're going to talk about a different way to do this um, in just a minute. Um, so write the following common numbers as fractions. Hopefully you recognize this one as 1 fourth. Okay, so that one's pretty easy. It's just a terminating decimal, very common number that we've, we've come across. This one might be a little bit more challenging, but if you say this the right way, it's pretty easy. This is in the tenths place, so this is 8 tenths, and then you can reduce that to 4 fifths. This would be the best way to write it. And then 0.666, just continuing on and repeating forever, um, that is 2 thirds. Okay, so I'm going to write down 2 thirds and I'm going to circle this. Um, I do want to do one thing right now. Let's grab the calculator and let's type in 2 divided by 3 into the calculator and let's see what it displays. So it's going to display 0.6 repeating and then it gets out to the end and it has a 7. Now, 2 thirds is 0.6, it just repeats forever, but I just want to remind you the reason that's se the 7 there is if this was off the screen, the next number off the screen would be a 6. So this would be all 6's on the screen and the next one off the screen would be a 6. The calculator knows that it, we need to kind of round if, if uh, we can't fit the whole thing on the screen. So what it did is it changed the 6 right here to a 7. So the reason that's a 7 instead of a 6 is because the calculator rounded. Okay. Um, so I'm going to write that it, it displays uh, what we said there, and the reason is rounding. That last digit might be dis different because of rounding. Okay, so again, a disclaimer on today's topic. Um, today's idea is really, really interesting if you're a complete math nerd, which I am. Um, I love love doing this stuff. It's really kind of fascinating. It's pretty amazing the way these problems will work out. Um, we are going to be using the skills that we learned today in different areas, but not a whole lot. Um, there are a few places where you'll run into this in the future. So it is a very good skill to have, and it deals with this warm-up question right here. Um, but for the rest of us, if, if, if you're not really into this, um, it turns out that this is just some really good um, mental aerobics. Uh, we're just kind of working out our brain here and doing something that's really complicated, or at least it will look complicated to begin with. So as we mentioned in the I can statement, what we're going to do is we're going to convert repeating decimals to fractions. And in order to do this, we're going to use our knowledge of algebra and of equations. In fact, we're going to use the golden rule of algebra. And the golden rule of algebra, if you haven't heard of this before, it's whatever you do to one side of an equation, so let's write the word side right here, then you must do that to the other side of the equation. 
So if you do something to one side of the equation, if you add 7 to one side, you've got to add 7 to the other side. If you multiply one side by 2, you've got to multiply the other side by 2. Well, we're going to use this rule in a very, very clever way, okay? And it has to do with what we did up here. Now, I showed that this, uh, start, this uh, warm-up question worked by just plugging that in, but what if we did something like this? What if I took this side and I actually multiplied it by 10? If I multiplied the other side by 10, I'd have 10x on this side and I'd have 20 on that side. And that's the trick that we're going to use here. We're going to take an equation like this right here. We're going to take x equals 5. And then the question here is, what does 10x equal? Well, again, if you wanted to plug in a 5 right here, 10 times 5 would be 50. If we wanted to multiply this side by 10 and multiply this side by 10, we'd get 10x on this side and we'd get 50 on this side. Well, by the same reasoning, if I multiply this side by 1,000, I've got to multiply this side by 1,000 to get this next one. So this is going to be 5,000 right here. And then it says, what is 1,000x minus 10x? Well, in order to do that, we're going to do something, again, really clever. Um, and I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to show you with numbers. So I've got two true equations right here. We showed that based off this original equation right there. So I've got 2 equals 2, and I've got 3 equals 3. Well, what would happen if we subtracted one equation from the other? So, if, for example, I took 3 equals 3, and I subtracted 2 equals 2. Well, 3 minus 2 would be 1 and 3 minus 2 would be 1, and those are still equal to each other. So I've made another true equation, okay? So I'm going to take um, this equation right here, and I'm going to subtract it from this equation right here. Remember, it says we want to know what 1,000x minus 10x is. So I'm going to subtract that entire equation from both sides, just like I had kind of set up right here. So if I have 1,000x minus... Um, 10x, I get 990x on this side. Whoops, oh, that, that was supposed to be a 50. Yep, that's supposed to be a 50. Okay, um, and I've got, uh, in fact, I'm going to line this up right here. So I've got 5,000 minus 50, so that's 4,950. You can double check me on your calculator if you'd like. Now, what I've got here is I have this equation right here, x equals 5. I made this equation right here. I multiplied both sides by 10 and got this. We made this equation right here. We multiplied both sides by 1,000. And then we did something kind of weird. We subtracted um, this equation, 10x equals 50, from that equation, 1,000x equals 5,000. And we got this equation right here. Well, when we see an equation like that, we normally want to go ahead and solve this. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by, whoops, 990. 990. So I'm going to cancel those off. And then I'm going to grab the calculator, and we're going to double check here, 4950, and we're going to divide that by 990. Hit enter, and lo and behold, we got x, whoops, we got x equals 5. Now, that seems kind of weird that we'd start out with this, do all of this weird stuff, and end back right where we started with, with x equals 5. Well, the point of all of this is we can take old true equations, these guys right here, and we can make new true equations. So if I start with this one right here, if I say that x is equal to 5, well, then this equation's got to be true, and this equation's got to be true, and as long as I'm subtracting the same thing or adding the same thing to both sides, I'm going to get another true, equa true equation and another true equation, and this is just kind of going around in a big circle. Now, this is a silly problem to do, but it does illustrate a really good point in the idea that we're going to use here. So I'm going to do these problems in example number two. You'll notice that each one of these is a repeating decimal. Um, I'm going to do these and see if you can figure out the trick to convert these repeating decimals to a fraction. So here's what we're going to do on this one. I'm going to write out the repeating pattern. So I'm going to write down a bunch of sixes. And I'm going to put a dot, dot, dot at the end. And then I'm going to kind of call this, I'm going to say the number that I want to use is this number right here. And I'm going to use a variable for that. So I'm going to say x is 0.666, just repeating out like this, okay? Now that number may look familiar. I'm hoping you know what that number is. Um, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So I'm going to do 10 times this side would be 10x. And if I multiply this side by 10, I'm, I'm going to move the decimal over one place. So this is going to be 6.6. I'm just going to have a bunch of sixes here with a dot, dot, dot. And then here's where it gets really, really clever. I'm going to take this equation for x, and I'm going to subtract it from this equation for 10x. So I'm going to subtract x on this side, 
and I'm going to subtract 0 0.6. All those sixes going on like that. I'm going to draw a line here, and then we're going to figure out what we have left. And this, this, hopefully, when I get done with this, this is actually a pretty fascinating thing. This side's pretty easy. We have uh, 10x minus 1x. That's going to be 9x. We have a 9x on this side. Over here. We've got all of these decimals here, but you'll notice that they're all the same. So if I do 6 minus 6, I get a 0. 6 minus 6, I get a 0, and so forth. So all of these would wipe each other out. Those are going to cancel. Those are going to cancel. They're all going to cancel all the way down here, even though I haven't written those down. That entire thing on the end is just going to go away, and we end up with 6 minus 0 is just 6. So just like we had up above where we had this equation that we got left with, we can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. Those are going to cancel, and we're going to get x equals, this is 6 over 9, so we end up with 2 thirds. Now, I'm hoping you recognize that. We wrote that down before. 0.6 repeated is 2 thirds. Okay? So if I take that repeating decimal, I end up with the fraction uh, 2 thirds if I run through this process. So we've kind of verified that 0.6 repeating is 2 thirds. Now, here's what I'm going to do on this one. Okay, see if you can spot the pattern. I'm going to write this out. So this is 0 0.90, 90, 90, continuing on like that. I'm going to write down x equals that number, 0 0.90, 90, 90, and going on like that. This time I'm going to multiply by 100. So this side is going to be 100 times x. And if I multiply this one by 100, I move the decimal over two places. So this is going to be 90.90, 90, 90, and continuing on like that. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to subtract uh, this side from both of those, or this equation from both of those. So this is going to be minus, and remember, this is going to be 0 0.90, 90, 90, and continuing on like that. I'm going to draw a line. And let's see what we get. This is going to be um, 100 minus x, 1x, that's going to be 99x. And then take a look here. Cancel, cancel. I'm going to cross out the 90 and the 90 and just continuing on like that. So we end up with a 90 right here. Well, to finish this off, we're going to divide by 99. And we end up with x is equal to, let's see, um, 3 goes in here 30 times, and 3 goes in here 33 times. Um, 3 goes in here 10 times, and 3 goes in there 11 times, so we get 10 elevenths. If you could see right here that 9 goes in here 10 times and 9 goes in there 11 times, then that's awesome. You're, you're uh, ahead of me and ahead of other people on this problem. So let's take a look here. It does say that we can confirm the answers on our calculator. Um, remember, we did 2 divided by 3 earlier, and we got that 0.6 repeating. Let's just double check this. What happens if we do 10 divided by 11? Wow, look at that. There's the 909090. And again, the reason that's not a 0 is because if it was a 0, the next one off the screen is a 9. So it was either writing a 90 or a 91. They rounded the right way. Um, so we, we did get that right. Okay, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to see if we can kind of come up with a procedure to, to figure these out. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to write out the pattern. 004, 004, 004, 004, 004, and going on like that. I'm going to write down x equals, and I suppose you could skip that step up there if you just wanted to start writing down um, what that pattern was. Can you guess what I'm going to multiply by? This has three digits in the repeating pattern, so I'm going to multiply by 1,000. So that's going to move the decimal over three places. That's going to move uh, the decimal behind the 4, so 004, 004, 004, and going on forever going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to write minus x here, and we're going to write minus point 004, 004, 004. You kind of get the idea. That is going to cross out with that. So we're going to end up with 999x, and then over here we have a 4. So if we divide by 999, then we get x equals, whoops, we get x equals, make those look a little better, 4 over 999, and then I'm going to circle that. Now, this one will be interesting. I mean, if this works, that's pretty amazing. So let's double check here. We think that 0.04 repeated would be 4 divided by 999. So we'll hit enter. 0 0.004, 0 0.004, okay, and the rest is off the screen. So we got that. So 
if you follow that you might be able to guess what the little procedure is here now before I flip the page over and we talk about what the procedure is I want you to spend a little bit of time and see if you can guess what that procedure is and also think about if all of those numbers can be written as fractions they're repeating decimals they go on forever and they repeat then what type of number are they well if they can be written as fractions they, that means they can be written as ratios then they are rational numbers they're actually pretty nice numbers so we're gonna flip the page over and let's talk about how we convert this um, so how to convert a repeating decimal to a fraction in just six easy steps uh, and I've got a little smiley face here because um, this is gonna seem like a complicated procedure it looks like it's a heck of a lot to memorize it's really not um, but you will have procedures that you're gonna have to follow in your future careers um, you know in, in school or whatever it happens to be so getting used to procedures is a really good idea so here's here's the way we're gonna do this um, and I've got just a couple blanks to fill in here and then we'll do a couple more examples and, and then you can practice on your own so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write out the decimal number so you can see the pattern it's really important that you be able to see the pattern we're gonna make an equation with X on one side and the decimal number on the other that decimal number that repeats on the other side like we were showing on the other uh, on the previous page and then if needed so if you need to and you don't always need to a lot of times this step isn't required um, yeah, I didn't have to do this on the other one it says multiply both equate both sides of the equation in step number two by 10 100 or 1000 etc so that the repeating part write down the word repeating so that the repeating part of the pattern starts just after the decimal this is really important um, that that repeating pattern has to start just after the decimal if the repeating parts uh, uh, repeating part starts just after the decimal already then we're just going to use the equation that we had in step number two okay multiply the equation in step number three okay by 10 100 1000 etc so there is a larger write down the word larger there's a larger whole number in front of the decimal okay so remember how we made that uh, the decimal move over uh, we had a larger decimal number in f in in front of the decimal number um, and then the repeating pattern starts again just after the decimal really important that it starts just after the decimal then we subtract the equation in step number three from the equation in step number four and this should leave with an X with a coefficient on one side of the resulting equation and a non repeating number on the other side and this is really the key once we do that subtraction that subtraction like we did on the other side that was the key right there once we did that subtraction we had a, a variable with a coefficient on this side and then a non repeating number on the other side um, and then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve the equation in step five and we're going to write the answer as a fraction in reduced form we're going to write it in reduced form okay now what's gonna help here is it's gonna be a great idea if you keep things lined up you get really messed up with decimals if they're not lined up so please make sure you keep things lined up when you write them down and then if you're a sloppy writer like I am um, try and clean it up a little bit um, this is a, a complicated enough procedure without making it more difficult by having really sloppy writing and having it tough to tell what what you've written down on your paper so um, on example three here's what we've got we've got this repeating pattern now I am gonna save just a little bit of work by doing this we're gonna write down X equals so this is the number that we're interested in we write down that decimal pattern 0 0.025 and notice that it's over all three of them so 0 0.25 0 0.25 I'm gonna write enough of them and then I put a dot 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 we need this repeating pattern to start again um, in f just right after the decimal so notice how many we've got in our repeating pattern one two three we need the decimal to go right there so we're gonna multiply by a one followed by that number of zeros so we're gonna multiply by a thousand because that will move it over three places so if we move it over one two three that's gonna be twenty five point zero two five zero two five zero two five dot 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 okay now we've got our two uh, equations so we're gonna go ahead and subtract X from this side and we're gonna whoops equals and we're gonna subtract point zero two five zero two five zero two five and so forth and again you'll notice the important part here that that repeating pattern starts exactly where it's supposed to because now we can cross off all of these 
we got rid of the repeating part and we're left with a 25 over here a 999x over on this side we're gonna finish by dividing by 999 and we get x equals so that fraction right there you may not have ever guessed it but that fraction right there or sorry that decimal right there comes from the fraction uh, 25 999 um, and again we're just gonna double check that on our calculator make sure that we got that right so let's do 25 divided by 999 hit enter and there we go that's that 0 0.025 0 0.025 0 0.025 repeating pattern okay this one is a little bit different you'll notice that there's only one decimal that repeats it's not the six and the three it's just the three so here's what we've got we've got x equals 0.633333 repeating like that now you'll notice that the, the repeating pattern does not start right after the decimal so here's what we've got to do on this one um, I need to, mo to move that over one place. So here's my original equation. We're going to multiply both sides by 10. That will move that over one decimal place. So that's going to be 6.33333. Okay. Now, um, we're going to take this equation and we're going to make the same thing um, or this one for that matter we want that repeating pattern to start one more decimal place over here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this one by 10 or you could say we're gonna multiply this one by 100 so if we multiply that one by 100 we're gonna move it one two decimal places so this is gonna be 63 point three 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 and so forth okay now let's take a look here this right here this was step number three if needed, multiply both sides of the equation uh, in step 2 by 10, 100, or 1,000 so that the repeating part of the pattern starts just after the decimal. This is step number 3 right here. Um, and this is step number 4. So we want to subtract the equation of step number 3, which is right here. So I'm gonna, just going to write 3 and 4. This is the one we want to subtract. So we want to subtract 10x on this side and subtract 6.33333 and so forth okay so um, what we end up with here is 90x and then over on this side um, the threes go away and then we've got 63 minus 6 well that ends up being 57 okay now we never would have guessed that a 57 comes up here but let's go ahead and finish this off and let's check and make sure that this actually works so this is going to be x equals 57 ninetieths. Okay. Now uh, we should check and make sure that this is reduced. Um, I think three goes in here. Three would go in there 19 times, and three would go in there 30 times. So it, we would circle that as the final answer. I suppose on a test you'd probably get quite a few points if you got to right here. That's not too bad. Um, but let's just double check and see what the calculator says. Let's write down um, 19 thirtieths. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to do 19 divided by 30 and we're going to hit enter and take a look at this 0.6 with a bunch of threes after it. So that is the right answer. Really amazing that it works out that way. And again, um, complicated procedure but hopefully you're not memorizing a bunch of this stuff you're just kind of getting the hang of it if you practice enough it'll it'll turn out to be um, not easy uh, but it actually turns out to be kind of fun um, so um, if that's enough great I am going to do two more examples I'm going to run through these as quick as I can so again we'll notice that on this one right here uh, the repeating part is just the 0 6 so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down um, 0 0.306 0 0.6 0 0.6 and that uh, 0 0.6 is repeating I don't have the repeating pattern starting right after the decimal so I need to multiply that so that the the decimals after the 3 so this is going to be 10x this is going to be 3 and then 0 0.6 0 0.6 0 0.6 better make that look a little bit better okay and then I need to make this pattern um, move over two more decimal places um, so I've got to move that over three altogether or two more from here so I could multiply that by a hundred if you wanted to think of it that way. I kind of like coming back up to this one and thinking okay I need the decimal right there so that's three decimal places so that's going to be multiplying by a one followed by three zeros so that's going to be three zero six point zero six zero six zero six and so forth and then again it's these last two equations that we use so I'm going to subtract 10x 
and I'm going to subtract 3.060606. And you'll know you've done it right when all of these uh, repeating parts line up. So we end up with 303 on this side, and we end up with 990x on this side. Get rid of all that. 990x over here. Cancel those off. Uh, 303 and 990, gosh, um, 3 definitely goes in here. It goes in 101 times, and 3 would go in there. I'm just going to grab that on the calculator, and let's check and see. Um, let's see, 990 divided by 3. You might know what it is. It's 330. 330. So 101 divided by 330. Uh, and let's see, we'll check this, 101 divided by 330. And what we're hoping is that's um, a, th a point 0.3 and then 0 0.6 is after that. And take a look at that. And then again, we've talked about why that 1 is right there. Okay, last one. I appreciate your patience with this. Um, I'm going to write down x equals 0 0.415, 415, 415, dot, dot, dot. Um, the pattern does start right after the decimal, so we're in good shape on this one. Um, I need it to repeat again, so I need to move it one, two, three places. So this is going to be multiplying by 1,000. So this is going to be 415 point, whoops, 415, 415, and so forth. Uh, these are the only two equations I have, so I'm going to subtract this smaller one from that. So this is minus, whoops, minus x. And then on this side, minus 0 0.415, 415, 415. Again, notice how those are going to line up. And we're going to end up with a 415 on this side and a 999x on this side. Divide by 999. Cancel those off. And let's see, 415. Um, I believe 9 will go in there. Let's check and see. 415 divided by 9. Whoops. 415 divided by 9. Nope. Uh, but 3 goes in there. 415 divided by 3. Uh, i got to get that right. We'll check this on the calculator. We'll see if 3 goes in there. 415 divided by 3. Uh, nope. Nope. Doesn't, doesn't go in there. Um, so this is going to be 415 over 999. And we're going to circle that. And let's just double check. We'll do 415 divided by 999. Hit Enter. And there's that 415, 415, 415, just that repeating pattern. Awesome. All right. Uh, no, that seems long and complicated. Um, we'll, uh, we'll work our way through this. Thanks for your patience. Good luck on the assignment.